Hey everybody, Mike here at Amis Tutorials. Welcome back. Well guys, today we're going to do another request. And the question that I got today was, can you model a vintage syringe? Okay, so that's what we're going to do. All right, we're going to start off with our glass tube. Okay, so we're going to take a polygon pipe for that. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale that out. That's about right. And let's tweak this a little bit. So in our attribute editor, we're going to bump this up to 40 subdivisions and the thickness, we're going to bring that down to 0 0.015 because it's a very thin glass tube. Okay. We're going to hit E and we're going to rotate that until we are at minus 90. There we go. Now we want some sort of skill going on on our glass. So we're going to go to create, uh, let's see, where do you go? Texts. And we will do five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 15 and hit create. Okay. So I'm just going to hit four. And here are our numbers. Okay. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale that in quite a bit because we want that to be nice and small. I'll just hit W, bring that out a bit. E to rotate until we're at 90. And then rotate backwards once again until we are at minus 90. Okay. From this view, we are going to hit W and we're going to move that towards our model. We're going to hit four so we can see what's going on. Make sure that that's centered. Okay, not bad. That's about right. Okay. We're going to raise them up a little bit so we know where we're at. And then let's check that from our shaded view so bring it down just a little okay cool now next we are going to take our glass tube and we're going to hit Control d to duplicate and we're going to hit r and we're going to scale that out a little bit and this is going to be our outer tube so from this view we want to make sure that it's um, larger than our glass okay but not too much larger and don't mind the uh, numbers up there because we're actually going to create an opening for that okay so that looks about right okay uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to create an oval um, cutout if you will okay so for that we're going to take a polygon um, cylinder yep I'm going to pull that out, E to rotate that over. So we're at minus 90. Okay. We're going to give this some more subdivision. Let's do 40. And uh, let's see, actually I need to rotate it this way. Sorry. Uh, let's make sure we're at minus 180. There we go. And then from our top view, we're going to hit F to zoom in, and we're going to right-click go to face, and we're going to select the bottom half, hit W, and we're going to drag that out to about there. Right-click object mode, and we're going to move that up and move that in. F to zoom in, and we're just going to snap that. So it's where it needs to be centered okay let's see we're going to hit r and we're going to scale it down just slightly okay let's see what we got here we're going to stretch this up like so and as you can see we need to bring it in just a little bit that looks a little bit better. Okay. Now, 
one thing. We want to create the oval insert in the outer casing, not in our glass tube. So we're going to take these two and we're just going to move them out. And hopefully I didn't take my text. Looks like I did. Oh, okay. We're upside down. Sorry. Okay. So we're good. So we're going to select this guy, shift select this guy and go to mesh, boolean and difference which creates that oval cutout. Okay, we're going to move this back in. Check it from our top view. And just going to check our distance here. Okay, so this looks pretty equal. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, now let's start with the next element. Okay. We're going to create a polygon um, cylinder once again. Move that over here. Hit E, rotate that to minus 90. There we go. Then we are going to add five subdivisions in height. We don't need any caps, so we'll do zero on that. And let's do 40 on this one okay we're gonna hit R we're gonna push that in to about there and while we're at it we're gonna scale it up just a little okay then we're gonna zoom in and we are going to select all these outer faces and I can probably do it quicker from this view all right so we're gonna drag select these faces and we're going to go to, uh, let's see, where did that go? Uh, under face to poke. Okay. Then right click vertex and we're going to select all the vertices with the exception of the vertex rows on the outside. Okay. So we'll get something like this. And then we are going to actually we've got a little bit too much going on here we only want the ones that are on the cross sections so we need to deselect the vertical rows so we're going to shift select those rows and take them out and there we go that should be okay and then we're going to hit R. And let's push that out. Okay. Right click object mode, which will give us something like this. Hopefully you can see it okay. It's going to be, uh, you can see it much better once it's uh, textured, but for now, cool. Okay. Let's move that element in. Okay. So let's uh, check it right there. All right. Okay. So now we need to deal with the section that um, uh, the, the kind of the finger grip, if you know what I mean. Okay. So for that, what we'll do is we'll take a polygon cube. And we'll pull that out. We're going to hit R. We're going to scale that in to make it nice and flat. And let's scale that out to about there let's check it from this view hit four so we can kind of see if that is positioned correctly and it looks like it is and then we're going to go to mesh tools insert edge loop tool option box and we'll do multiple and we'll do eight and we'll add them like so okay Q on your keyboard right click vertex and we're going to take these and we're going to scale them out all right and then we're going to take these four and these four and we're going to scale them out to about there and we're going to go back to mesh tools injured edge tool option box and we'll do three Add them right there, hit Q on your keyboard, 
right click vertex and we'll take these three and these three hit R scale that out and then take these two and scale them out to about there okay right click object mode hit three on your keyboard which will give us this okay we're gonna move that in and again check it from this shoe right here there we go all right then we're going to take this guy control d to duplicate pull that out and again make sure that this is aligned okay and this one we are going to scale down a bit so hit r And we're going to scale that to a point where it's pretty much fitting our grip. So maybe a bit more. You can see there's a grip line. We'll do we'll do that. Okay. We're going to push that back in like so. All right. Now we need to uh, create the um, plunger I think it's called okay so for that we're going to take another polygon cylinder we're going to pull that out we're going to hit E we're going to rotate that to minus 90 and because I want to see what this thing is doing I'm going to take my glass insert and my numbers I'm going to go to Mesh and Combine, right-click Assign New Material. Let's go with a uh, Blin for now. And I'm going to set the transparency way up. Okay, so now I can actually look through it, which is kind of the point. Okay, all right. Now our plunger will be rubber. So I'm going to go in and set my caps to zero. Okay. And I'm going to hit R. I'm going to stretch that in. And then we're going to hit W and we're going to move our plunger into our syringe. Okay. Let's just uh, check the dimensions here. Looks like we need to bring it in just a little bit. And let's make 40 subdivisions, which is a bit better. Okay. So if that's our syringe, and it should be sitting inside of our glass, and it looks like it is, okay. Let's add a little bit of detail to it. So we're going to hit W. We're going to pull it out for now. And we're going to go up to Mesh Tools, Injured Edge Loop Tool, Option Box, three subdivisions. Uh, edges, sorry. There we go. Hit Q on your keyboard. And we're going to go into this view right here. And we're going to right click, go to face. Select these two face rows. Hit R and pull them in like so. And then right click, go to vertex. Select that middle vertex row and scale that out like this right click object mode we're going to hit W we're going to move that in let's say halfway or so actually to get the correct distance for our plunger axle if this is the maximum extension of it okay then we need to figure out how long our axle will be okay so first I'm going to pull that out I'm going to right click, go to face, select this face, edit mesh, extrude, hit R. So that will be the dimension, so to speak. G to repeat, W to pull out. Okay. 
So now if we right click, go to object mode and move this guy in to the maximum plunge depth, if you will. Let's say that's somewhere around here. We can right click, go to vertex. And again, I don't want that. I just want vertices on this guy. Let's see if that will work. Yeah. Okay, so that would end about there. Okay, so now that we have established the length, we can right click on object mode and we can pull this guy back out. All right, now I'm not too happy about the thickness of this guy. Okay, so what we'll do is we will move in, right click edge, select that entire edge row and move over to this end and shift select that one and that should work. Right click edge and these like these. So now if I scale this in, uh, it's not what I was hoping for, but we'll fix that. Okay, and then right click vertex, take those, hit W and bring that back in. There we go. All right, that looks a little bit better, okay. So now that we have that, uh, let's see, we will um, take this guy, control D to duplicate, pull that out, have to zoom in, and there we go. And let's see how that works out for us. Okay, so we're gonna take these, Mesh combine, we're going to hit W and we're going to bring that in. Okay, which brings us to the section where we need to add the uh, needle and so forth. Okay, all right, take this guy, control delete. And it's always good practice to use what you already have. And also from a manufacturing standpoint, it would kind of make sense to um, use these um, objects over and over to get consistency and to make the production process cheaper, okay? Right click face, we're gonna go to edit mesh and extrude. We're gonna select R to scale in, W to pull out just a little. G to repeat, R to scale in, W to pull out, G to repeat, R to scale in, W to pull out. Let's just see how that looks. Not bad. We'll do one more. G to repeat, R to scale in, W to pull out, okay. And then we will create our actual needle and let's see how we're doing on thickness. G to repeat, R to scale in, and G to repeat and W to pull out, okay. So let's give this some length. That would probably be about right. Have to zoom in. Right click face. Have to zoom in and delete that face. Okay. And then gonna right click go to edge 
we're going to select that edge and we're going to rotate this to an angle but we need to keep in mind that this is distorting our shape a little bit so now we're going to hit R and we're going to bring that down just a little okay so we're getting there now we already applied glass material to our tube we're going to need to right click on object mode we're going to select this we're going to deselect our outer case and deselect our glass we are then going to right click with that object selected uh, assign new material MIA underscore X material tab presets and rubber and replace now this section right here this is obviously not rubber so we're gonna select the face which will get all of these hopefully and not those sign the material MIA presets chrome and replace and we will select these objects as well and those are already applied assign the material presets chrome and replace there we go okay we're gonna select the whole thing we're gonna go to mesh and combine Let's make sure it's sitting on our grid OK. There we go. So we're going to create a ground plane. Oops, what the frick was that? There we go, yep. Let's scale this guy out. Okay. Let's add some external light. So we're going to go to mental ray, indirect lighting, global illumination, and final gathering. I'm going to set up caustics because of the use of our glass. In my quality tab uh, make sure ray tracing is selected and we're going to increase these values because I want the uh, light to go through my glass and act correctly there we go in my common tab I'm going to set my image size to HD 1080 and let's see did I do this image base lighting create let's find a suitable HDRI image so Maya HDRI and let's see we'll do a um, the sky setup okay we're gonna right click on our ground plane assign new material let's go with a uh, Fong E and let's make that black okay and we'll create an additional light source so create lights point light pull that up hit seven on our keyboard so we can see our light that's probably not going to be enough light but we'll see so we'll create light area light we'll pull that guy up push it back we're going to hit T on our keyboard so we can aim our light at our object okay let's set up a resolution gate should be about right let's give this a try um, render and see what we got see you guys in a sec well guys like I thought not quite enough light going on there so we're just going to add some light sources I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate my uh, area light here. I'm going to move that guy over there and move his aim over here. 
and we'll hit Control D once again, and we'll move it back there and push that down a little. And let's give this another go. Okay, I'm still not happy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ground plane, assign new material, Fong E, and we're going to make this white which should make a huge difference. Maybe a little bit too much light, but we'll see. Okay, hang on. Okay, guys, well, here's our final render, and there's our syringe. So uh, hopefully this tutorial was useful, and if you've got any questions, as always, just let me know. And if you want to check out future uh, tutorials, you can um, check out my Facebook page, MH Tutorials. Okay, thank you guys for watching, and I'd love to see you guys again. Bye.